Live from Canopy Laval Stadium, Stony Brook football is on their homecoming day, and they will face the James Madison Dukes here tonight on this beautiful Saturday evening. Jim Ferchland, Zach Wilson, and Ken Furman here with us. Bad snap, he's looking down the field, he's gonna scramble to his right. Demonch, oh, now Ms. Danucci gonna run this in for the touchdown. 20 yards out, Ben Danucci, the three-year transfer out of Pittsburgh. Gets the first touchdown for the Dukes with his legs on a 20-yard scamper to the right part of the end zone. Third and goal at JMU 6. Fields, he will give it to Lawton again. Lawton's in for the touchdown. Great blocking up front by Tunstall, opening up that gap, and Lawton scores the six-yard touchdown with 9.23 left to go in the first quarter, and it's 7-6 Dukes. So first and 10 now for the Dukes at their own 45. Van Horst remains in that tailback. Two wide receivers set, Stapleton goes in motion. And now here's Jawan Hamilton, and Hamilton's down the sideline. No one out in front, all the way to the right side, 10-5, touchdown. Jawan Hamilton, the 45-yard score, goes in untouched for the Dukes. And it's 13-7, JMU. It's Fields play action fake, down the field towards the right, looking for Anderson. He makes the catch! Inside the JMU five yard line. A beautiful throw from Tykel Fields to Nick Anderson. And Stony Brook will get the ball at JMU's five yard line. Gain of 40 on the play. In the catch. First and goal. Here is Fields giving it to Lawton again. Lawton punches it in for the four yard score. Had two defenders on him, fought them off, and he finds Pater for a second touchdown of the game. His third of the year, and the Seawolves are back in this one. It's 14 to 13 with 2.15 left to go in the first quarter. First and goal, RJ Obese tries to get outside, and he's going to go in for the two yard score. Percy. R.G. Obese gets it in for the Dukes. And it's 21 to 14. That's his fifth touchdown of the year. Second time tonight, Fields has completed a pass on fourth down. Fields, 15 seconds remain. Fields, he's got his receiver. McKenzie's open, and they got a spike in 10 seconds. There's a first down, so the clock stops. They are inside the JMU 30. Spike it down. You got about maybe two plays left, and then you got to bring out Courtney. And then someone went offsides for JMU. No call was made. So let's see if they decide to go with the field goal. They will. They will immediately have Nick Courtney they kick. They will have Courtney come out for a 46-yard field goal. Nine and seconds. it all lies on the hands of Nick Courtney. Remember, the Dukes have two timeouts. They could ice him here. And remember, he is uh, entering so far 11-15 with his field goals this season. Has a long of 44. This if is Courtney makes this kick, it will be a career high. His career high is 44 against Fordham. Here it is, Courtney, the kick is up, and it is good! good! Five seconds remain, Nick Courtney ties the game at 38. Hamilton's over 100 with that run. 12 carries for 102 yards. Hamilton will get it again, he will, and he'll find the end zone. Towards the left side. Hamilton carries for a JMU touchdown. The Dukes score first, 44-38. Fourth and 18, this is really for the game. Fields has to throw it down the field. He's got his receiver in the end zone. Off the hands of Delonte Hellams and could not hold on. He had it right in his chest and dropped it on the dive. We're going to say goodbye here from Kenneth P. Laval Stadium. I'm Jim Furchwin, Zach Wilson, Ken Furman. Once again, the final score, the Dukes win 45-38 to in overtime. <laughs> Live from Kenneth Field Laval Stadium, Stony Brook football action on 90.1 FM WSB. The Stony Brook Seawolves will host the New Hampshire Wildcats tonight. Jim Furchwin alongside me, Zach Wilson and Ken Furman. And last week, Stony Brook, they had a really tough test against the James Madison Dukes. Game had to go into overtime and snap the 12-game home winning streak for the Seawolves in a 45-38 loss. But now New Hampshire comes into Canopy Laval Stadium and they've won their last three games. Second and nine from the 15. 525 remains. Score remains nothing, nothing here at Canopy Laval Stadium. Brosmer awaits the snap. Washington Jr. in a tailback. And it's a play action fake and in for the touchdown. And that was Justice Woods Malone. That was Brian Espinet making the touchdown pass. 
Six nothing Wildcats, 5-16 remaining for that. Well, he's their leading receiver when it comes to scoring. His third touchdown of the season, and a good one on that on the cross. Just piece of the defender, he's able to catch the slant inside and head strong into the end zone for the touchdown. Second and 14 from the 15. Fields, Lawton, Trent, Anderson, and Constant. Here is Fields over the middle to the field. Constant's got the 15 yard score. His fifth touchdown of the year, and the Seawolves are on the board. It's 7-6 with exactly 14 minutes left to go. A beautiful slant pattern from Constant, and we saw the same exact play last week against James Madison. First and 10, eagle eye formation with Carlos Washington in at tailback. Going in motion, Charles Briscoe III. Here is a play action fake. Here is Brosmer looking for Briscoe on the run, and he makes the catch into Stony Brook territory, across the seam, inside the Stony Brook 30. A big play for Brosmer to start off this second half, and it's with a bang on a 35-yard completion. So second and nine from the 30. Washington remains in that tailback. Brosmer. Going bootleg to his right, looking for his receiver, making the catch. Briscoe the third again, and it's inside the Stony Brook 15, around the 13, a gain of 17 on the play. Briscoe the third, making two big catches so far in this second half, and New Hampshire is really capitalizing, and they're only about 12 yards away from the end zone. So here's Hughes for a 23-yard field goal. It's up and good. So shotgun formation, here's Fields. He'll drop back again, looking near side. Anderson's open, he makes the catch, and he's just shy of the end zone around the two yard line. A 39 yard completion there from Fields to Anderson, and Stony Brook is working into New Hampshire territory around the goal line. This play is screaming inside handoff to Tyson Lawton. Ball at the one, shotgun formation. Here is Fields, give it to Lawton, and Lawton's in. The first rushing touchdown of the night for the Seawolves. It's a one yard score, his sixth touchdown of the season. Big play here for the Wildcats. They need to get to the six. They're at the 20. Here is Brosmer dropping back, looking for the end zone to his right far side, making the catch, Brian Espinet, and it is a touchdown. His second touchdown of the night, Espinet, Far side in the end zone and makes the snag for the Wildcats. They retake the lead 16 to 14 with 932. Brian Espinet, what a catch. And the clock is ticking, but a big defensive stop there for the Seawolves. But here's Hughes. Hughes for the kick. It's up. And it is good. Just hits inside the right upright. And it's 20 to 14. New Hampshire with 507 left to go. 33 seconds remain, one more kneel down, and this will do it. Yeah, tough loss by Stony Brook. They had options. They had plenty of chances to convert. They should have done a lot better with the possessions they had and risking their chances and on a fourth down. that will do it. That's the last snap. And New Hampshire storms really like they just won a championship game. And they will win here in Kenneth Field of Alstam. They will advance to four and two. Stony Brook loses their third game, their second in a row. And it's a final 20 to 14 in favor of the New Hampshire Wildcats. Wildcat, Wildcats stay undefeated in conference play with that huge victory riding their wave of momentum. First and 10 from the 11. Sean Harris Jr. goes in motion from the far side. He, play action faked. Fields wide open down the field. Here is Nick Anderson catching down the field past the 40, the 30, inside the 20, and down around the 15 yard line. First and 10 from Towson's own 44. Shotgun formation, three wide receiver set fields again, looking far side, looking down the field again, does he have Anderson? Anderson's got it, and he'll go in for the touchdown. 44 yards. Nick Anderson, his second touchdown of the year, and it's 6-3 seed with a 7-19 remaining in this first half. And no surprise here, Fan Rat will get the ball. Flacco, give it to Fan Rat, and he, can he get in the end zone? He is in. Touchdown, Towson. Off the one yard rushing Thanret scamper Thanret Thanret who punches it in, Yidi Thanret. His 13th rushing touchdown of the season. Going in motion, Caleb Smith. Here is Flacco. 
going towards the far pylon, looking for Leatherberry. And touchdown, Towson. Shane Leatherberry from 12 yards out. And Flacco just continues to dominate this year for the Towson Tigers. 23 to seven. Tigers, fourth and two. Two yards to go. Here is Fields, play action fake. Nothing's available in the end zone. Touchdown, Nick Anderson. Who else? This second touchdown for two yards. And Nick Anderson has had a career day today for the Stony Brook Seawolves. 162 yards on six catches. Ball at the 32, first and 10, 11, 23 left to go. Shotgun formation, four wide receivers set for the Tigers. And they're just letting that clock wind down all the way down as much as possible. Flacco will throw. Still, now he's got some room. No, he'll throw back. Was he past the line of scrimmage? No, wide open here is Darian Street. Nothing but green grass in front of him. The 15, the 10, the five, touchdown, Tigers. 68 yards. Stony Brook drops to five and five on the year. Towson advances to six and four as the Towson Tigers take down the Stony Brook Seawolves by a score of 31 to 14. Live from Kenneth B. Laval Stadium, Golden Apple Part 21. Stony Brook Seawolves will host the opening great games for the final game of the 2019 season. Lesniewski going in motion. Here is Morfort going in. He's in for the score. Two yard touchdown, Carl Mofor. And he's in for six. Six nothing, Albany with 10.59 remaining in the first quarter. That's his seventh touchdown of the season. Bain on the near side. And here is Mofor, who's got up a seam down towards the near sideline. Down the 40, the 35, the 30, to the 20. He went out of bounds around the 17 yard line. Znuski going in motion again. Here is Undercuffer, gives it to Mofor. Mofor marching again. Three yards out this time, his second touchdown of the game. His eighth of the season. And now it's 13 0 Albany with 6.32 left to go in the first quarter. Shotgun formation for Fields going in motion, Helms. And this will be a play action figure game. Looking for Helms down the field. And he makes the catch into, Stony into Albany territory at the 40. A pickup of 31 on the play for Delonte Helms. The biggest play that Seawolves have had so far is yardage today. And take the little gains and try to just chop it down like a tree. Keep getting more and more to be able to break through this tough Albany defense. Fields looking for the end zone. Anderson in the corner. And does he have one foot in bounds? Touchdown, Stony Brook. Brendan Benson actually with the culprit for the touchdown. His first touchdown of the season for the Seawolves, and the Seawolves are on the board with their first six points of the afternoon. There could be some momentum coming back for the Seawolves, but first they gotta get this big play. Here is Undercoff for being pressured, and Gavin Heslop goes down, and the ball is free. Heslop to the end zone. Touchdown, Stony Brook, and we have a ball game. Three yards, Gavin Heslop on the sack, strip, fumble, and touchdown, all in one. Fields at the five, going in motion, Anderson. He will find, looking for Anderson, touchdown Seawolves. Going all the way from the left side to the right side of the field, the right to left, Anderson. His fourth touchdown of the season, and then it's a four point game. As Nesky goes in motion, here's Mo Ford trying to find the end zone, and he does. Another three yard score, his third touchdown of the game. Carl Mofor. Here's Fields, more like for one final play in the end zone. Trent gets it. Touchdown, Seawolves. Four seconds remain, and a four yard touchdown for Andrew Trent. His first touchdown of the season, and it's 31 to 26. And so we're going to say goodbye here from Kenneth P. Laval Stadium. The final score here, Albany 31. Stony Brook 26. I'm Jim Furchel alongside Zach Wilson and Ken Furman. Thank you for listening. It was a fun season to call. Once again, listening to the longtime home of Stony Brook Seawolves Athletics on 90.1 FM, WSB Stony Brook. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.